Hi everyone, uh, this is um, our uh, second uh, broadcast on Hanomics. Uh, today I will carry on with the uh, previous lecture, so we haven't finished uh, the topics on Phillips curve, um, which relate inflation to unemployment rate. So to start today, let me just give a recap of what we uh, what we did. Uh, last time, but just to make sure, uh, can you all hear me now? Can you please type in the chat box whether you can hear me or not? So please type in the chat box if, whether you can hear me or not. Okay, great. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'll, I'll start then. Uh, as I said, in this lecture, we uh, will we'll carry on what we started last uh, lecture when we start talking about Phillips curve and the relationship between inflation rate and the unemployment rate. Uh, just as a quick recap, just let you know where we uh, stopped last time in uh, um, these lecture notes. Um, we started first by giving a background of what Phillips curve is. Um, it's kind of a historical background. We started with the original graph from uh, Phillips paper 1958. And as I said in the last lecture, the paper is cited at the end of these slides. So if you want to read the paper, feel free to just go um, find out more about this paper. But what what the paper suggested is that there is a negative relationship between the unemployment rate and the rate of change of money wage rates in, in the UK uh, between uh, 1861 and 1913. Uh, so um, after that, the paper by uh, Samuelson and Solo 1960 labeled that sort of relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate as the Phillips curve. And we explained that during the 1960s, it became a very popular uh, 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 relationship and it was uh, applied to other uh, countries or using different data or data from different countries. And it shows similar uh, uh, shape or, or trend where you have a negative relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. So and, and, and because of that, it became central to macroeconomic thinking and policy at that point. Um, and the logic was very simple. So if you have a right shift or the aggregate demand shift right, that meet, that increase or businesses respond to that by increasing employment and that will drop unemployment and having uh, many firms uh, competing for uh, for uh, uh, workers that means will that will put upward pressure on wages wages and also will uh, because wages are cost for firms so that means they will uh, push their prices upward as well but we also explained that in 1970s uh, um, uh, with the uh, oil price shocks where where we saw a uh, stagflation 1970s where both variables, the inflation rate and unemployment rate, were, were high. So that kind of relationship was uh, questioned at that point. And then after that, uh, economics start bringing in expectations into the relationship between the inflation rate and unemployment rate, as well as also the um, uh, supply shocks. So both expectations and supply shocks play important role in understanding the relationship between these two variables, which were not uh, uh, proposed in the original uh, Phillips curve. So after that, Phillips curve became known as a, uh, or this such Phillips curve that uh, introduces um, uh, expectations of inflation and supply shocks. Uh, that uh, is known, uh, that was known as the modified Phillips curve or expectations augmented uh, Phillips curve. And that's, that's what that's what we discussed last time, and also we spent um, a good time in the lecture last time uh, trying to uh, drive or show how we can drive uh, uh, the Phillips curve, including now, as I said, expectations and the uh, supply shocks from the short-run aggregate supply curve, which we discussed uh, uh, in the in the lecture last week. <clears throat> 
So um, one thing to keep in mind, so what I'm showing you on the screen now, which is something we discussed last time, we show you the destination and show the, the curve. So this is what we know as um, the Phillips curve or modified Phillips curve, if you wish so, because now we account for um, expectations of uh, inflation and also uh, account for supply shocks here, which is this Greek letter uh, new. So uh, in that sense, so what we wanted to do or what, what the, the main uh, objective from uh, the, 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 the last lecture was to, to show how we can start from the short run aggregate supply curve and we can drive the equations that you already see now. But before we do that, let's just quickly remind you what this equation is suggesting here is that uh, the inflation rate depends on expected inflation. This is the first part of the equation and also it depends on cyclical unemployment as we explained last lecture which is the gap or the difference between the actual unemployment rate and the uh, natural rate of unemployment which is uh, uh, denoted as un or u with a superscript n to just to let you know that this this is what we mean or this is how we refer to the uh, natural rate of unemployment plus uh, some supply shock and as i explained uh, last week and the week before that was mainly because of the uh, oil, oil shock oil price shocks that have been witnessed in 19 or experienced in 1970s that um, uh, became very uh, important part of uh, macroeconomic analysis uh, and of course including the uh, Phillips curve and we said this uh, um, beta is kind of uh, exogenous or a constant uh, 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 variable or parameter. So from there we started with the, uh, as I said, we drive the um, the Phillips curve from the short run aggregate supply curve. This is something we discussed last week. We said uh, we, we, we show how we can drive the short run aggregate supply curve that in which Y or the, uh, 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 um, the, the, the output level depends on the natural rate of unemployment, uh, of, sorry, of output level, which is the full employment output level. Uh, plus some um, sort of parameter alpha here and what you see here is the difference between between brackets the difference between the actual price level and the expected uh, price level so now if you solve this for p because we we want to uh, derive a relationship between uh, uh, prices or inflation or changes in prices again is the unemployment rate so that's why we try to uh, solve this for a uh, uh, price level and then from here we added the supply shock uh, uh, new this term and then after that we, um, um, we, we, we just subtract last year's prices uh, PT minus one from both sides so this is just by the way this is the same equation in the previous slide I just want to put it in the new slide so to make it easy for you to follow how we can uh, how we move from this one to this one so all what we did is just we subtract the price uh, and time T minus one from both sides which would give us uh, the inflation rate when we explained also that the change in prices or change in price level is not exactly uh, the inflation rate unless we interpret uh, that P as the natural log of, of prices. So from here we have uh, we're very close to what we uh, uh, wanted to achieve here because we have inflation on the left hand side we have expected inflation on the right hand side and we have this relationship which is kind of this is output gap um, and the, um, the, 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 uh, the, the the supply shock or the Greek term that we added to represent supply shock so from here we used what we learned about Oaken's law where the this sort of negative relationship between uh, um, uh, cyclical uh, uh, unemployment and the um, natural rate of output or the full employment output level and uh, that means this this term here we could replace this uh, with uh, this term which relates now inflation directly to uh, this cyclical unemployment or the or the gap or the difference between the actual unemployment rate and the natural rate of unemployment 
okay so this is this is where we stopped last time so this this was just a recap so the whole story from last time we gave the background of the uh, Phillips curve and what it means and and how important it was at some point and how it has been modified or augmented to take into consideration the role of uh, expectations of inflation and also the the role of supply shocks as you can see here from the what we can call the modified i mean we're going to call it the phillips curve from now on but we understand that this uh, form of phillips curve is different from what was originally proposed by phillips in 1958 so the current version what we're looking at now is another version where or a modified version of the original one where um expected inflation and uh, sub, uh, supply shocks are uh, uh, taken into consideration as well so that is that is as i said this is the um uh, recap from last time that's everything we discussed last time uh, just before i i move on to the uh, new material uh, do you have any questions guys so please if you have any questions uh, please feel free to put your um, your comment uh, online and I will be able to see your comment and uh, I will, will be able to respond to your comment. So if you have any questions regarding what we discussed so far in the last lecture and, and this recap, please uh, post your uh, post your comment as uh, post your question as a comment online and I should be able to to see your um, your question and respond to that question. Anyway, so let's let's go back to okay. So uh, moving from here, then. So now we drive the, uh, the the Phillips curve. Now we know how it looks like. So we want to make some comparison between the short run aggregate supply curve and the the Phillips curve. Uh, as you've seen now, you might have expected we drive one from the another. We we, we drive we we managed to drive the uh, Phillips curve from the short run aggregate supply curve. So what both tell us, I put both on the screen now so you can see both relationships. So the short run aggregate supply tells us that output is related to unexpected movement in the price level. So you see that's the actual output level and that depends on that gap, which is the distance or how different the actual price level P from the expected price level PE. Okay, so when you compare this to what uh, the Phillips curve is telling us, it tells us the unemployment uh, uh, related to unexpected movement in uh, the inflation rate. So we've got this unemployment gap, and this uh, this is the uh, the inflation rate. So again, I, just to explain, this is cyclical unemployment or the deviation from the uh, natural rate of unemployment and as a reminder again the natural rate of unemployment reflect both types of unemployment fractional unemployment and structural unemployment and explain what that means so again to highlight this i have been repeating this many times <clears throat> uh, the natural rate of unemployment uh, does not mean that the unemployment rate equals zero it equals the sum of fractional unemployment and structural unemployment so any deviation from that natural rate of unemployment, that, that means we, uh, we have also if the actual rate of unemployment is higher or above the, um, the natural rate of unemployment, that means we have cyclical unemployment. So at, at the natural rate of unemployment, the cyclical unemployment typically is, uh, is zero. So anyway, so that means also when output gap is zero, actual inflation, so because when output gap is zero, that means this is uh, we, 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 the, the actual unemployment will, e will be equal to the uh, natural rate of unemployment. So that means with this will equal zero. And which means that in that case, if that is the case, that means the inflation rate equals its expected level or the expected inflation rate because this will equal uh, zero. And obviously, there might be some unexpected or unanticipated uh, supply shock that might they may change the actual inflation rate. But for any given level of this, or if this is zero, if we assume there's no uh, supply shock, and we were at some point where um, uh, we are, or the economy is uh, functioning at the um, full employment level, which is Y bar or at that level of full employment, 
um, uh, 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 output level, that means the um, the, the cyclical employment, uh, cyclical unemployment equals zero, and that means the the unemployment or the actual unemployment rate will be equal to the uh, natural uh, rate of uh, of unemployment. And in that case, or that point, you will see that actual inflation uh, pi here equals its expected level pi e or pi to the superscript e. Okay, so this is one one thing we learned from this relationship so far. So if we uh, then uh, try to build more on that. So just looking at both curves, we'll see that the Phillips curve provides similar implication to what the aggregate supply curve it uh, su uh, suggests. And that's why sometimes people call the aggregate supply curve as the Phillips curve or the other way around. So what are these implications? So basically what we can see from this equation, if you want output or if you want the actual output, level to go beyond the natural rate uh, level so that means you need to tolerate some unexpected inflation this sort of uh, a trade-off so and we explained that before if if uh, just to remind you if the actual output level below the natural uh, output level or the um, full employment output level that means we have a recessionary gap and 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 again if uh, we, we explained that again. That means we, we have the actual prices uh, or the actual inflation rate is below the expected inflation rate. And that means we, 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 we have a deflation. OK, so it should be the other way around. If we have an inflationary gap where the actual unemployment rate uh, will be greater than, so be the other way around than the, um, the, 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 the full employment output level so that means we would have a, an inflationary gap rather than a recessionary gap in on the slide and then that means the um the 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 actual inflation rate will be higher than the uh, expected inflation rate and according to this relationship that means we would have inflation or that means inflation will rise as a result of that so this is again some implication or things that we learn now by comparing between these two or by looking into these uh, uh, two curves uh, more closely. So when output gap or when output level is given, so at any given of the output gap or output level, changes in expected inflation will change, uh, uh, will change actual inflation directly. So if we take this as given or doesn't change, then that means any changes to expected inflation will be translated directly into changes into the inflation rate. So that's what we call the uh, inflation in this case is self-fulfilling because when people expect inflation, it kind of, it happened because they expected, inf uh, the expected inflation, sorry, when they expect, the, when, when their expectations for inflation uh, it goes up, so that means the actual inflation rate will go up too. Okay, so and and as, as I, I already said that before, uh, that the uh, the uh, Phillips curve that include expectation or expected inflation is known as expectations augmented Phillips curve, and this is one of the very important implication that you can see here now. Um, that means if people expect inflation to rise, that means the actual inflation rate will will go up as well. So this is something uh, uh, as well we, we learn from this comparison between both curves. So if we move from here, then we, we, we look more into uh, expectations of inflation, how that um, uh, shaped our understanding of the original Phillips curve that we saw in 1958 in the original paper by Phillips, and how that has changed it so far to uh, include the, or the inclusion of expectations and then we would ask another question then so how that so if we already know how that uh, uh, helped us to understand the relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate it will remain to think about or what we what we need to think about is that how people form their expectations so what what changed the uh, people's expectations or uh, economic, different economic agents or actors? What, what changed their expectations and, 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 and how these expectations are formed? And this, how this is translated to change in Phillips curve or in the relationship between 
uh, uh, inflation rate, the inflation rate and the uh, unemployment rate. So we will I will tweak the well if you if you just uh, tweak the the inflation rate equation a little bit. So this is what we we saw so far. So if we uh, move this expected inflation um, um, the other side to the left hand side, then this is the same. This is a Phillips curve. Um, all what what this is tell us now it tells us that what we have on the left hand side in this equation here on this expression. Uh, we have un unanticipated inflation, so this is the part of inflation that people uh, didn't see coming or they, they, they didn't expect. And the, this, this part tells us on the right hand side we have the deviation of the unemployment rate from its uh, natural rate. And obviously we, we still have our uh, uh, lovely uh, term that represent new or the Greek letter new that represent uh, uh, supply shocks on the right hand side. So how does he, how does this change or how does this uh, uh, how rearranging this equation that way or this expression that way would give us um, uh, some more insights into the Phillips curve. So basically it tell us now okay so if we look at the, uh, the, 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 the relationship now in its new uh, form now what, what, the way you look at now after you rearrange this equation, it tells us that, well, it is important to think of not uh, or the relationship between inflation rate and the unemployment or the cyclical unemployment rate. It's actually important rather than thinking that way, which is the the original um, Phillips curve. It's actually it's important to think about the change in uh, 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 inflation rate or the unanticipated un un inflation or the inflation that people did not expect and then the the um, the, the cyclical unemployment uh, rate so if we if we use that as I said we would try to see how this will give us more insights into the relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate or what was originally proposed by Phillips in his paper 19. 58, you will see that in 1960, probably or at that time, why people, um, when or why other economists, when they try to replicate Phillips' work um, in different countries like the US and elsewhere, it seems they, they thought that the relationship is still inverse relationship and it's still, it looks like a, a stable and, and, and a very straightforward relationship between. Uh, the inflation rate and and the unemployment rate. Uh, that, that the reason could be because that the inflation at that point, inflation rate was low and stable, and that's why expectations regarding inflation that it was almost zero, or meaning that people didn't expect that inflation to rise. So that means if you take that out from here, so that will give you the original uh, uh, Phillips curve, of course, without that uh, supply shock uh, factor, uh, which again, as I said, it, it just contributed to our understanding of this relationship after 1970s when we uh, experienced the um, uh, uh, oil price shocks. So what does this suggest? It, it, it suggests that if expectations or, uh, of inflation are very low, nearly zero. So people don't expect the inflation rate is very stable, it's very low, so they don't expect inflation to, 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 to increase. So that means that will that will give us exactly the relationship we've seen uh, in uh, or similar to what we've seen in the original uh, relationship, original uh, Phillips curve, where we have um, a, a negative relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. So that was in the 1960. I'm trying to to give more insights, so or an explanation why that seemed to be uh, uh, some kind of a stable relationship or some kind of a straightforward trade-off between inflation and and unemployment at that point. Maybe because the expectation of inflation was really uh, 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 very low, very people didn't expect the inflation to increase. But of course, when we saw what happened with supply shocks. That, that has uh, some implication to uh, the, 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 the cost of production and that obviously increased prices. And the, the stagflation that we've seen in uh, 1970s has um, uh, changed uh, uh, the way we think about the, 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 the Phillips curve.
So in, in that sense, then moving to, as I said, moving to 1970s, that sort of uh, stable trade-off between both variables or the inflation rate and unemployment rate. And just to remind people that what, what, um, uh, what the original uh, 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 relationship or what the original Phillips scale suggested is that trade-off. So if you want to um, uh, uh, reduce unemployment rate, then you have to tolerate some a higher level of inflation rate and the other way around okay so and that was something that uh, government could uh, could use um, but then given that now we understand that expectations are something that um, very important uh, determinant of this relationship so that means if for example the government tried to um, use that what was uh, uh, known as uh, or understood as a trade-off between both variables and they try to uh, 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 for example um, uh, increase uh, uh, government spending or decrease government spending there's they, they took some policy action to 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 achieve the, the the mix between or the inflation and employment mix that they they want if people um, form some sort of expectation about that they already will they will factor this in their expectation and that that is not uh, going to have any changes to inflation so that basically is not going to do what or is not going to achieve what the policy maker uh, aim to achieve because now we bringing in expectations into the into the picture and 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 that that's how so what is what can make a change here what can change that is the surprises to inflation rate uh, can have real effect on employment and and, uh, and output but of course predictable or uh, things that economic agents can see happening obviously they or they expect happening they obviously adjust uh, uh, react to these changes so uh, it wouldn't have real uh, change or the policy wouldn't then have uh, uh, or achieve its its objective so this is this is what we've seen in uh, after 1970s so beginning in 1970s you see that the the us in the us the relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate kind of disappeared so it's kind of this is scatter plot so you can't really get that sort of nicely uh, 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 inverse relationship as you could see it here you can see um, very smooth and nicely and can can very a uh, very obvious relationship or negative relationship between both variables once you move to nine uh, after 1970s you see you kind of uh, this sort of relationship vanishes but if if you account for expectation or unexpected or this this form of the um, uh, uh, Phillips curve where you factor in expectation so that means uh, you might find some similar uh, sort of uh, um, a negative relationship between so the difference between this and this one now you've got expectation into the into, into the picture you 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 also um, uh, see that the uh, uh, unemployment rate seems not to affect the inflation rate but rather changes in the inflation which again it's what we we discussed earlier which is this gap between uh, the actual inflation rate and the expectations about the inflation rate okay and that might give you that sort of inverse relationship or nicely downward sloping uh, uh, curve um, so so now this is this is very important so because uh, this is one point I wanted to uh, to cover uh, in this section again when we start talking about expectations one I wanted to show you how uh, bringing expectations into the picture now help us or give us more insights into the original Phillips curve and how it worked. So as you as you see here, so um, we started with um, so we started with the, just moving this or rearranging this equation, and then uh, we show that this is uh, the unanticipated inflation on the other side. This gap between or the cyclical unemployment, which is the gap between the actual unemployment rate and the natural rate of unemployment, and then we try to uh, use that to understand why that relationship in 1960s uh, were very clearly uh, inver an inverse relationship between. Uh, um, an employment rate and inflation rate and the, that sort of trade-off was very uh, uh, clear at that point and then 
why or what could have happened in 1970s that have changed uh, this uh, to make um, the situation or to make the, the data coming from the US, for example, show that this relationship disappeared or the, that negative relationship between the unemployment rate and inflation rate has disappeared, then bringing uh, uh, expectations into this picture, as I said, will give you more insights into the uh, relationship. So in 1960s, maybe uh, expectations about inflation rate was very low, nearly zero. So that gave us that sort of straightforward trade-off between the unemployment rate and inflation rate, just assuming there would be no uh, supply shocks or sup there's no supply shocks. And moving from there, try to, to understand this uh, with expectations. So it seems that the unemployment rate affect not the inflation rate itself, but rather the change in the inflation rate. And what we're looking at here is the unanticipated changes to the inflation rate or this deviation from uh, the actual expected, uh, sorry, the actual inflation rate and the expected uh, inflation rate. And as I said before, what we've seen here, what we try to, what we've been calling now in this lecture of the Phillips curve, it's actually, it's called expectations, augmented Phillips curve. Again, it just because it takes into consideration uh, expectations about inflation. So what remain here now to cover in this lecture is how people form their expectation and how that affect the relationship or the Phillips curve or the relationship between inflation rate and the um, the the unemployment rate. So one way to think about this is that people form their expectations of future inflation based on what they have experienced uh, recently about observation or what they have observed about inflation. So this, this sort of, um, if you could say, expectation forming uh, uh, mechanism or the way people uh, form their expectation it's called adapt, adaptive expectations. So basically what it means is that people um, think of um, a, to form expectations about um, a, a inflation rate in time t, they basically look at what happened in time t minus one. So if we talk about, let's say, uh, uh, monthly um, data. So if we have an expectation uh, this month about inflation, should be exactly the same as the observer or the actual inflation rate in the previous month. Okay, um, so that is that is the <clears throat> excuse me, that is the main idea here. So adaptive expectations that means people form their expectations of future inflation based on recently observed inflation. So last year's inflation rate serve as a good or last time period or t minus one whether you talk about month quarters or or or, uh, or, or years so uh, in that case so the um, uh, t minus one inflation rate serve as a good predictor of uh, t inflation rate so uh, or you can write it that way so the expected inflation in time t equal the um, actual or the observed uh, inflation in time t minus one okay so in that case, you could write um, the, um, the Phillips curve, which we know here, rather than uh, you just replace the expected uh, inflation rate with the actual inflation rate in the, in the, in, in the last year. And that, that gives you this um, uh, pi t minus pi t minus one. So basically we just uh, replace this expectation by the observed um, inflation, or you can look at this as the change in inflation rate, which we actually uh, show here. So this kind of change in inflation rate against the unemployment rate. So if you look at this one, we have the change in inflation because we have uh, pi t minus pi t minus one, <clears throat> um, and that that's basically the change on inflation. Or you could, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you could use the um, the, the the first uh, way we, 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 we explain or we, we, we wrote this uh, expression where we have um, only inflation in time t on the, on the left hand side and then everything else on the right hand side, which means that this just moved to the right hand side with a positive sign. So that means uh, inflation in time t depends on inflation in time t minus one and uh, depends also on, an, on the gap between 
the actual unemployment uh, rate and the uh, natural rate of unemployment. So uh, just before I continue, I'm just going to look at the check the um, the um, the comments. Okay, okay, perfect. So okay, um, just had a quick look at the comments and uh, if there are any questions. So I'll come back to the comments again to see if uh, there are more questions that I can address. So now we moving to um, yeah, what this relationship tell us? So what this um adaptive or based on that adaptive expectation uh, 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 um, mechanism or the way people may form their expectation about inflation in time t what does what this tell us it tell us if the uh, actual unemployment rate is higher than the um natural rate of unemployment meaning that we have positive cyclical uh, uh, unemployment that means the inflation in time t will be uh, less than the inflation in time t minus one that means inflation will will decrease if the unemployment rate in time t was less than the un, the natural rate of unemployment that means we have a kind of an inflationary gap so that means the actual inflation rate will be higher than the inflation rate in time t minus one and that means we have uh, inflation increasing Okay, if both are the same, so if this, if the actual unemployment rate equal the natural rate of unemployment, okay, um, that means the um, the actual uh, uh, inflation rate will equal the uh, inflation rate in time uh, t minus one, meaning that inflation will not change uh, because of, and that's why this natural rate of unemployment called the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment or NAIRU for uh, short so that 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 is because of this uh, relationship when you look at this so if we are at the full employment uh, output level that means we basically cyclical unemployment equals zero that means the actual unemployment rate will equal the natural rate of unemployment rate and that case the the inflation in time t will equal uh, equal the inflation rate in time t uh, minus one so that means inflation will not change when we are at the natural rate of unemployment rate okay so um yeah so uh, so this is this is again uh, just one way to form uh, expectations as I said uh, adaptive expectation which is basically saying that people expect inflation um, uh, in time t will be equal to the observed or the actual inflation rate in time t uh, uh, minus one so uh, also it tell us that the inflation uh, rate um, um, has some inertia meaning that in the absence of in the absence of supply shocks so there's no supply shocks here uh, or cyclical unemployment meaning that again which if this equals zero so that means um, the um, inflation rate will not change will be always uh, will continue as long as we don't have supply shocks as long as we don't have uh, cyclical unemployment so that means basically the inflation rate will not change will will be stable at its current rates so it's not going to to change okay so past inflation in, in, in change or influences uh, expectations of current inflation which of course it affects uh, wages and prices that people set but if we have uh, zero cyclical uh, uh, unemployment rate and uh, we have no supply shocks so that means this is not going to change so inflation rate is going to be stable or is not going to, will continue to be indefinitely at its uh, uh, current rate so moving uh, from here then uh, we could think about what can increase inflation what can or how how inflation increases or how inflation uh, falls uh, we have two uh, causes of rising and falling inflation um, again which we can uh, build on our understanding of this relationship um, one is cost push inflation and that uh, I should have added the uh, supply shock term new here so but you you really know that if we have a supply shock uh, 
that basically will or if we have to be more accurate if we have an adverse supply shock that will raise the production cost and that will induce firms to raise prices and pushing inflation up so one reason for uh, inflation to go up or to increase is basically cost push inflation which comes from the supply shock term so just go back to where last time i added it i shouldn't have dropped it so from here so this is the supply uh, shook term uh, new the greek letter new again we use that to uh, represent supply shocks so if these if there's an adverse supply shock so that means um, uh, cost of production will increase and that means inflation or prices will increase and inflation will will increase so this is one one reason so cost uh, cost push inflation the other one is the demand pull inflation so according to this um, inflation uh, results from um, uh, demand shocks basically so positive shocks if we have what for whatever reason aggregate demand curve um, shift to to the right so that means unemployment rate will fall uh, below its natural uh, rate so if you assume we we move from um, um, a point where or initial an initial equilibrium point where uh, we were or the economy was at the full employment uh, output level and for whatever reason we saw that um, um, the, 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 there's, there's a shift in the aggregate demand curve to the right or a positive shock to aggregate demand and we explained different examples before last week about what that means what a positive shock to aggregate demand uh, means but for whatever reason now we have a positive shock uh, or positive demand shock so that means unemployment rate will fall below its natural rate and that pulls the inflation rate up why because when an employment rate fall uh, is below the natural rate of unemployment so that again we explained that mechanism before we said firms will compete for uh, 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 workers because it's uh, the unemployment rate is very very low so that means it's very difficult to find workers or they want to attract uh, good workers let's say or qualified workers uh, workers with uh, a certain level of uh, 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 skills that they, they require so to do that then they need to offer them higher wages and if they offer them because they have to offer them higher wages or increased wages that means the wages here are uh, of course increases uh, uh, wages increase the uh, production cost and that means obviously they have to add this on the uh, prices okay so that means inflation will uh, will uh, the inflation rate will will go up again and that reason here is because of demand pull inflation so um moving here if we want moving from here if we want to uh, graph phillips curve we said okay now taken into uh, consideration whatever mechanism or the uh, expectation formation mechanism which we we adopted here which is the adaptive uh, 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 expectations uh, mechanism we, we, in, in in a few minutes we'll, we'll look at uh, other possible mechanisms but now for now we talk about um, the current inflation or the expected inflation in time t equal the the observed inflation time t minus one um, and that means in the short run policymaker uh, policymaker can could have this sort of trade off between uh, inflation and the um, and the uh, uh, unemployment rate but just to to highlight here what we mean by the short run here is the period until people adjust their expectations of inflation meaning as long as people think that okay so expected inflation rate is exactly as uh, the previous exp uh, uh, t minus 1 or the previous um uh, time period expectation uh, or uh, sorry inflation rate so that means basically it would be stable but then until there's let's say a, a supply shock or a demand shock that moved inflation or change it changes uh, uh, or change it the inflation rate so that means uh, next time period people will change or will adjust their expectation about inflation rate to reflect the new level of uh, the inflation rate so <laughs> then what can shift that inflation rate obviously um uh, we we talk about how people when they adjust their expectation this is exactly meaning that 
the, uh, the, the, the expected inflation rate has changed. So an increase in expected inflation rate will shift the short run Phillips curve upward. So it moves to the, to the, to the right or rightward. So because of a now uh, we were at the expected inflation rate one and then at a higher expected inflation rate, that means that Phillips or the short run uh, Phillips curve will, will uh, shift to, to the right. There are also other reasons, also supply shocks. We talked about uh, uh, supply shocks or if there's an increase in um, um, the, the natural rate of unemployment, uh, 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 the natural rate of unemployment, again, that will, will shift the aggregate, um, uh, sorry, we will shift the, the short run uh, uh, Phillips curve. So that's basically, so what, what shifts the, the Phillips curve? Again, if there's a shift in, uh, if there's a, supply shock if there's a if, a, if there's a change in expected uh inflation uh, uh, uh rate or if there's a change in the natural rate of of unemployment again that will will shift the uh short run uh phillips curve uh, as well so we just from here that if if that uh sort of uh, trade-off applies so that means we could have what we know as the uh, what we can call the sacrifice ratio, and that means to reduce inflation, policymakers can contract uh, aggregate demand, causing unemployment to rise above the natural rate. So, um, that in that sense, the sacrifice ratio will measure the per, uh, the percentage of a uh, year's GDP that must be foregone to reduce the inflation by one percent point. So usually or empirically estimated at 5%. So as an example here, if you want to reduce inflation from 6% to 2%, so that means you must sacrifice 20% of one year's GDP, uh, which means the GDP loss would be the inflation reduction times the sacrifice ratio. And, um, or you could, uh, this loss could be happen over, um, uh, uh, spread over several years, let's say 5% loss uh, for each uh, of uh, four years, and that that's basically the cost of uh, slowing down or uh, inflation or disinflation is lost of, of of GDP based on that. So, <laughs> moving from here, I'm just going to conclude with this. As I said before, so one one uh, 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 expectations uh, uh, formation mechanism. We we talk our uh, forming mechanism. We we talked about adaptive. Uh, expectation from here if you remember so we, we said people form their expectations uh, of future inflation based on recently observed inflation but this is not the only uh, way people uh, um, uh, can form their expectations about the future inflation rate so there's also another way people can um, um, may uh, follow to uh, expect inflation in the future um, so as I said, we, we already talked about adaptive expectations and which people base their expectation on future inflation based on recently observed inflation. But also there's another mechanism which is called rational expectations. And in that sense or in that, in that way, um, uh, uh, people base their expectation on all available information. So that includes um, the... the uh, of course, inflation in T minus one, but also include any change in policies or any current policies. So, if there what if there's a change in policy that tried to achieve something or change inflation, and then that was announced and that or oh, people see that coming, then they again they will adjust their expectations regarding uh, 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 future inflation rate, taking into consideration what has changed. So as, a, as an example, which is, uh, I'm going to conclude with this, suppose that the central bank, for, um, for example, announced a shift in priorities from maintaining low inflation. So they were focusing on inflation in the past, but now they want to maintain low unemployment, which means obviously they will relate some uh, uh, level of, a higher level of inflation rate. And this shift, this side will apply from next, uh, next week. According to adaptive expectation mechanism, then uh, expected inflation will not change because this change in policy did not affect past inflation. So basically, um, according to the mechanism that we have uh, just discussed about forming uh, expectations regarding uh, future inflation rate, um, nothing will change. Uh, 
because um, the expected inflation rate uh, in time t equal the actual inflation rate in time t minus 1. So announcing change in policy today is not going to change the inflation rate in time t minus 1. And therefore, the expected inflation rate in time t is not going to change. However, if the mechanism or if the way people form their own expectations about future inflation is more uh, uh, according to rational expectations, in that case, expected inflation rate will increase right away because again, they will factor in all this announcement into, into, their, into, into their forecast about uh, inflation rate. So according to rational expectation, if there's a change in policy, if there's a, if there's a change that happened that make people believe that uh, 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 this will affect inflation in the future, obviously they will take into this, they will basically factor this into their, their forecast regarding inflation, future uh, inflation. So and that's, that, that's the difference between adaptive and rational expectation. So that's everything I wanted to cover in this lecture. Um, uh, obviously, we, 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 we explain more about Phillips curve today. If you want to read, uh, um, the reading for this uh, chapter is from Mac News book, textbook, chapter 14. Uh, from next lecture, we'll start talking about uh, uh, economic growth and see how we go with the how we get on with the with the material. So I'm going to look quickly at the the questions. I know I I, I didn't look I didn't check the questions for a while. Um, our people talk about how uh, how beta and alpha is determined. These could be uh, estimated um, uh, uh, empirically. Yes, beta is is is, a, is an exogenous variable, and it's it's um, uh, yes it, it can be it can be estimated uh, empirically. Okay, any other questions, guys? Any other questions about this? Uh, of course, thank you so much for uh, coming and following the lecture online on Hanomics. Um, um, the, uh, as I said, from uh, this week, we are broadcasting now the lectures live on Hanomics at the same time of the lecture. So please, next week, again, we'll broadcast the lecture next week on Hanomics. If there's any change, for whatever reason, I will email you. But um, uh, as things stand for... Uh, for now, we, we, we're going to broadcast the lecture on my YouTube channel on Hanomics, so please, please be on time next uh, next lecture. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next, uh, next week. Please ha uh, have a nice weekend and, and stay safe. And regarding the tutorials, I will post a video uh, recording to go through the tutorial questions. So don't worry about the tutorials. I know we didn't do any tutorials. I did only one tutorial session this week, so I'll call it this session. I'm going to upload it soon, and I'll email you once I upload it on uh, on YouTube. Thank you so much for um, um, following the lecture and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.